Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kim and this is Expedition Three Pages. This is going to be my Roll of Reads TBR for the month of March. If you don't know, Roll of Reads is a reader form being run by the lovely Mel from a book fiend named Mel. And this reader form is basically based on her TBR game, which is also called Roll of Reads. I'm going to be linking Mel's announcement video just down in the description for you to go and check out if you're interested in also taking part in the readathon, which I recommend because it was super fun to play. But yeah, I'm going to be linking her announcement video down below and there she explains absolutely everything. So yeah, I wasn't actually supposed to be taking part in any readathons in 2022. This is what I told myself at the start of the year because I wanted to focus on my reading goals for the year and because I'm a slow reader, I was like, as much as I love readathons, I can't take part in them because of other reading that I want to do. To be fair, even though I said this to myself, I knew that I wouldn't last very long. I feel like lasting two months is pretty good, to be fair. Because in this readathon you can choose how many times you roll for prompts, I was initially just going to roll for one prompt and pick one book and say, okay, this is my participation in the readathon. But then I felt really left out when I thought about it and I was like, but I want to play the full game. I love watching Mel's TBR game every single month. So I thought, you know what? No, I'm just going to play the full game. Whatever happens, happens. Whatever amount of books comes out, comes out. <laughs> and then what I'll do is I'll do a try a chapter situation to work out which books from that TBR that I'm going to prioritise in the month of March. Because I knew if it came out with like loads of books, I wouldn't be able to complete them all anyway. So I thought, well, this way, you know, I could theoretically read all of them, but in reality, I probably wouldn't. So this way it kind of helps me like sort them and work out which ones I want to tackle first, basically. So what I've done is I played the game. I've got my books. I know what books I want for each prompt. And then next Saturday, so Saturday the 26th of February, I'm going to be running some sprints. And during those sprints, I'm going to be trying the first parts of the books. So like basically every 20 minute sprints that I run, I'll be reading a different book and then discussing it after the sprint has happened and trying to work out which ones to prioritize for this readathon. And I'm going to be joined by the lovely Amy from A Star Reads, which I'm so excited about. I absolutely adore Amy and her channel. So if you haven't checked her out, although you probably already know Amy, but if you for some reason don't know Amy, then I highly, highly recommend her channel. She's an amazing booktuber. And yeah, so what what Amy has decided to do is use the same prompts that I've rolled and then we're both going to be trying chapters of the books during those sprints that fit the prompts which is really exciting. Okay I had to stop filming because someone started drilling so I can't actually remember where I was before I left. <laughs> but yeah I think I was saying Amy's joining me for the sprints on Saturday. But yeah so the plan is that we read a different book for every 20 minute sprints and then talk about our first initial impressions of them and if it was the right choice, basically. Stuff like that. So you're very welcome to join us if you'd like to. I think it's gonna be 8 p.m. GMT. And yeah, so we'd love to chat about books with you guys there. Okay, I'll show you now how Roll of Reads went for me. Okay, so let's find out how many rolls we're doing. Seven. Oh no, this is bad news, bad, bad news. Okay, so let's lay out them out, okay. That is 11. So 11 is just here. And that's favourite genre. Right, so roll number one got me favourite genre, which I wouldn't say I've had a cheat here, but I suppose I have been saying recently that my favourite genre is fantasy. But also my favourite genre is like science-y kind of fantasy speculation or I guess sci-fi stuff and like but just any kind of speculative fiction like what if this happens in the future and like how would things go. I love that kind of fiction. So that kind of book is what I've chosen for this prompt and it is uh, Dawn by Octavia E. Butler. So this is the first book in a series. I think yeah Lilith's Brood, Lilith's Brood series. And yeah look at this cover I just think it's absolutely stunning. I bought this recently and I've been really really dying to read it. To be honest when it comes to TBRs now I am very cautious about saying what I think a book is before I've read it because so many times I've said what I think a book is and then it turns out that it's just not quite right. So I think I'm just going to read like the very first part of the blurb if that's okay. It says when Lilith Lyapo wakes in a small white room with no doors or windows she remembers a devastating war and a husband and child long lost to her. She finds herself living among the Onkali, a strange race who intervened in the fate of humanity hundreds of years before. 
They spared those they could from the ruined earth and suspended them in a long deep sleep. Yeah, and then it goes on to explain how they like changed the world and they've like brought her back awake, I guess. I'm so, so intrigued. So yeah, this is the book I've chosen for favorite genre. Take another one. Roll number two. Ooh, 11 again, no, oh, gosh. This is non-fiction. Okay, so the second roll was also an 11. And basically in this game, if you roll the same number three times throughout the game, then you have to add an extra roll on top. So that's why I was freaking out a little bit there. But the prompt was non-fiction. And for this, I've chosen The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins. I've had this book for absolutely ages. And I can't remember initially why I first bought this, apart from that I was intrigued about it. But now I'm apprehensive about this book. I don't know huge amounts about Richard Dawkins, but I know that he's very, very strong minded in his views. And I worry that this book is going to be like too much for me to take, like if he's too forceful with his opinions. And so I thought that I would pick this one for this prompt because I'm going through the books and doing a try a chapter thing. Then I can kind of see if I do actually want to read this or not, because yeah, I have a little inkling that I'm not going to get on with it. And also because it's older as well, that makes me a bit worried <laughs> about like, you know, j casual sexism and stuff. Yeah. So it's first published in 76. Oh, and one of the chapters is called Battle of the Sexes. So yeah, I'm really cautious about this book. I'd be interested to know anybody's thoughts if you, any of you guys have read this. Replace number 11. Hopefully that's just one there. Okay, come on, not 11 again. Let's try and shake it around too much. Shake it, shake it, shake it. 13. And we've got, ooh, okay, this is cool. Takes place on an island. Okay, roll number three got me read a book that takes place on an island. And for this, I've decided to read Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. Cause I recently spoke about Daniel Defoe in one of my vlogs cause he appeared in another book that I was reading and I became really intrigued about him and his life and stuff. And in the comments, Amy actually said to me that Amy didn't get on with this book. So I'm intrigued to chat to her about it and kind of read the first part of it and yeah, just just see what I think of just the beginning and then hear her thoughts on it as well. This I believe is about a guy who's on an island on his own. I don't actually really know to be honest. So yeah, I guess I'll find that out too. <laughs> Place the prompt. Roll number four, 14. And we've got mental and physical health representation. Roll number 14 got me mental stroke physical health representation. And so the book I've chosen for this one is called Tiffany Sly Lives Here Now, and it's by Dana L. Lewis. This book follows a young girl called Tiffany who's just lost her mother to cancer and is sent to live with her father. And it's about what happens to her in that whole process. Replace the other prompt. Roll number five. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. No. This is another 11. Oh God. Okay. Oh, okay. Booktuber's favorite book. Okay, so roll number five was another 11. So now I have to roll eight times. And the prompt was to choose a booktuber's favorite book. So actually I do have a prompt that's similar on my TBR game that I play. And for that prompt, I actually have made a cup of loads of different booktubers that made favorites or worst books of 2021 videos. So I actually utilized that for this prompt and the green ones in the pot, I'll put a picture up here so you can see it, but the green ones in my lovely Night Eyes mug, um, <laughs> The green ones are for the favourites videos. So I randomly picked one of those out and that turned out to be Milena Reed's channel. So I went on Milena's channel and then I found her favourites video for 2021 and I found book number one on that list and I just decided whatever it was, that was 
the one I was going to pick for this prompt. And it turned out to be Half a Lifelong Romance by Eileen Chang, which I'd never heard of before. So this book was written actually in 1948 and it's set in Shanghai in the 1930s. From reading the blurb, the book seems to follow two different people who fall in love or are attracted to one another, but for various reasons, either aren't allowed to be together or can't be together, and they end up going their separate ways, but then they both harbour this hope of coming back together. And that's kind of like the overall premise of it I think. But yeah I do really love the thought of reading a book about Shanghai in the 1930s because I don't know anything about what it was like in the 1930s so that's really intriguing. I will link Milena's video just down in the description if you wanted to go and check out the rest of the books. And let's replace the prompt and roll again. Hmm this is roll number six but now we have to roll eight times. Seven. Oh, thank god okay. Oh no, but 11's reset now, I guess. Oh. Incorpor oh. Incorporate another readathon prompt. Okay, roll number six got me incorporate another readathon prompt. So ugh, this was hard for me because I'm not supposed to be doing any readathon. So I have been trying to let it wash over me when I see readathon announcements and like no don't get caught up don't get caught up but yeah just coincidentally Caitlin from the lit review just released an announcement video for Greekathon um, in which she's one of the co-hosts and I will link Caitlin's video down in the description for you to check out and then there she will link to the other co-hosts because I believe there's quite a, quite a few co-hosts for that readathon and it sounds so fun it's basically like a battle against the titans so I think everybody chooses a god that they want to play for and then there's like teams within the game as well where you're like head to head with another team depending on which god you're under and stuff and yeah it sounds so fun <laughs> it sounds so fun i wish i could read 20 books in one month that would solve all my problems yeah talk about the first world problems or what anyway so yeah caitlin is the host for team hermes and the prompt for team hermes was read a short book so i was like well that's perfect right so there is a short book that I've wanted to read for absolutely ages and that's The Test by Sylvain Nouvelle. To be fair this is probably going to be a really rubbish book to do a try chapter for because it's only 100 pages long I think and also everybody that I've seen review it says I don't want to say anything about it, you have to just go in not knowing anything and then just learn as you go. The only thing I do know about it is that it is like centred around a British citizen test that's all I know. But yeah, everybody really likes it or finds it like weird or something. I don't know. But it always gets very good reviews. So I really, I've wanted to read this for absolutely ages. So yeah, this is the one I'm going to choose for that and I like, finally get to it. And replace this one. Four. I'm forgetting what we've had now, but we haven't had four before. This is LGBTQIA plus rep. Okay, roll number seven got me LGBTQIA plus rep. And so for this, I've decided to go with My Cat Yugoslavia by Pajtim Statovci. I know I'm not pronouncing the surname correctly there because when I talked about this book actually in another booktube video that I did, I looked up the pronunciation of it and I just couldn't say it. Like it was impossible to say for me my mouth wouldn't make those sounds. Um, so yeah, my apologies, but definitely pronouncing the surname wrong. So this book, I'm not 100% sure what it's gonna be like. I feel like this book, I went into a bookshop and then I just thought it looked interesting, so I picked it up. So I'll just read a bit of the blurb, but it says, in 1980s Yugoslavia, a young girl named Am Amin is married off to a man she hardly knows, but soon her country is torn apart by war and she is forced to flee with her family. Decades later, Amin's son, Bakim, has grown up a social outcast in a country suspicious of foreigners. Aside from casual hookups, his only companion is a pet bow constrictor, boa constrictor. Until one night in a gay bar, Bakim meets a talking cat. It is this witty, charming, manipulative creature that starts him on a journey back to Kosovo to confront his demons and make sense of the remarkable, cruel history of his family. And soon he learns that love can be found in the most unexpected of places. So yeah, this book sounds great actually. And yeah, I'm it feels really nice too. It feels like soft and smooth. <laughs> Is that weird? Maybe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, okay, so this could be our last roll. As long as we don't get a one, I think everything else is safe. I don't think we've rolled twice anything else, so... Unless we roll a one, this is our last roll. 
five. Perfect. And this is, oh, this one is favourite author's first book. Nice. Okay, and my last prompt was read your favourite author's first book, which I freaking loved this prompt. So I thought it was great. Um, Mel does come up with really good prompts. She really does. My favourite author is Robin Hobb. I love Robin Hobb. I love her books, but I've only ever read her books where she's under the pen name Robin Hobb. So her first book as Robin Hobb was Assassin's Apprentice, which I've read because that's part of the Realm of the Eldling series, which I adore. But she also has another pen name. So her other name is Megan Lindholm. I think you pronounce it. So the first book that she wrote as Megan Lindholm was written in 1983 and it's called Harpy's Flight. I literally don't know anything about this. I don't know what to expect because I do know that she's written under two pen names because she's written in two different styles, I think, or they're two different like subjecty matters. The book cover that I found looks similar in style to like Robin Hobb books. So that's throwing me a bit, to be honest. Yeah, I don't really want to read what this is about because I kind of just want to start it and then see. I'm excited. It would be good to read one by Megan Lindholm and see what I think. I hope I like them. Imagine if I don't, that would be sad. Okay, so those are the eight books that I've chosen for my role of Reads TBR. And yeah, I actually contacted Amy about this and I think what we've decided to do, because eight is a lot of books to try and get through in sprints when you're going to do like 20 minute reading sprints, would be all day reading. So I think what we're going to do is read four books kind of before the sprints and then at the start of the sprints have a chat about the four books we've already kind of tried a chapter for and have a chat about what we thought about them and then have four 15, 20 minute sprints for the rest of the books. Yeah, that's the plan. And I'm really excited because I think it's gonna be so much fun to do that. Eight is like way too many for me to even finish if this was the only thing I was reading for the month of March, but obviously I've got my TBR game that I'm gonna be playing as well, which I haven't played yet. So I will try and make as many of these books as possible fit in my TBR game for March and see how I go. But yeah, it's unrealistic to think that I'm gonna read eight, it's just not gonna happen. If I read, to be honest, like, one or two or three books from this TBR, then I'd be happy with that, I think. Maybe magic will happen and I'll do it, who knows, but I'm not gonna put any pressure on myself to try and get it done. I am also looking for a job at the moment, so I don't really have time to get too caught up in like trying to do loads of reading because I need to be getting myself a job. <laughs> so yeah, that has to take priority for sure. Yeah. Thanks to Mel for creating this readathon. It's so exciting. I was so fun to play Roll of Reads. I literally watch Mel play this every single month and yeah, it was really fun to play. I really enjoyed it. So yeah, thanks to Mel and thanks to Amy who's going to be joining me on Saturday. I'd love to know if any of you guys are also joining in Roll of Reads and what prompts you've got and what books you're reading. Because, yeah, oh, if you don't know as well, Mel's also doing a giveaway along with this. So that's pretty exciting. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, it's great. It's fun. And I'm glad that I'm joining in with it, even though my New Year's resolution was to not do that. <laughs> cool. So anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.